Well, first I'd like to thank uh, uh, my compatriots at the Park Service and many other agencies as well that have helped to put this symposium on. Uh, in the immortal words of Martha Stewart, it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm going to present a little bit different uh, talk than I had originally written uh, my abstract on, uh, where I had con I, the abstract concentrates on, on the uh, Gunsight Pass area, but uh, I decided to expand a little bit more and grab more of the enchilada and uh, sort of a bait and switch on you, although I think I'm the one that's been baited and uh, talk about the a little bit wider spread on the Denali Fault. Uh, let's say the apex area of it in the uh, central Alaskan area from Richardson Highway to uh, the Denali Park western boundary and so on. So, And I'd also like to point out that uh, uh, a lot of the ideas here, which are somewhat contrary to what you've already heard in the last two speakers, uh, are uh, originated primarily from uh, Dr. Bela Shete, who used to be with the USGS and uh, has done a lot of uh, on-the-ground uh, truthing of a lot of geology here in an attempt to rectify some of the, uh, the problems that we see in the geology on the ground versus uh, some of the other uh, uh, parts of, uh, of unraveling the Denali Fault overall. And oh, by the way, you're going to see a few repeat slides of actually most of my programmers have been given, so I'm probably going to go down to about five minutes, but we'll see. You've already heard a lot about the Denali Fault. The, the uh, big picture, at least the Alaskan picture, is, is like this. Uh, uh, 1,200 kilometers long, arcing, arcing through the state east-west pretty much, with uh, the three major strands. The, uh, the primary one is the McKinley Strand, or Denali Fault, most people refer to it as. The Tashunda Strand, uh, as, as Peter and, and Roger, too, have uh, referred to in the uh, 2002 earthquake. And the Hines Creek Strand, which is actually right near us, uh, right out the door here on Hines Creek. And uh, uh, you can see the green dot that shows where we are now. And uh, I know you haven't seen this one before, uh, uh, but I think it's been well covered, but this is the basic mechanism for why the, uh, the faults are there. There's uh, simply, a, uh, with the, as the Pacific Plate continues to subduct, there's a, a tears or ruptures or faults and folds going on well on board within the state that are represented by, again, the Denali Fault and many other faults that are uh, uh, into the interior. In the park here, uh, um, there's, uh, and for that matter, uh, actually I'll start with the, uh, the blueprint you see on the bottom here, uh, the evidence of the Denali Fault System as a regional structure statewide. Uh, obviously we've got, uh, from some of the photos you've seen in uh, uh, Peters and Rogers slides and, and other places, uh, uh, there's a statewide topographic feature that's an obvious trough. It's one to three kilometers wide and represents a fault trace of some kind and, and it arcs through most of the Alaska range. Uh, other parts, like within the park, are a good example. We have a uh, um, fault trough, uh, obviously, here, where, uh, where uh, some sort of movement has occurred. Without uh, uh, Peter's uh, excavation, we might not know what kind of movement has occurred, but we can see different rock types on each side. Uh, obvious, very close uh, juxtaposed lithologies or rock types that the uh, uh, just uh, uh, east of uh, Anderson Pass, and even appears to be an overthrust, although difficult to show because the uh, alluvium covers most of the bedrock there. In places there's uh, right laterally offset features. This is one of the nicer ones in the park. These are a couple of streams not far from Anderson Pass to the east, which are offset some, uh, uh, well, a couple hundred meters at least, it appears, and, and well-exposed bedrock in that area. And then the Wickersham Wall, uh, Gunsight Pass area of uh, uh, Denali itself, where the, uh, the fall actually arcs around the, the the corner here, the bend that uh, that uh, Peter referred to primarily. Uh, to sum up the various theories that I see going on these days, there may be more modifications of these. A lot of people, that it's a very, uh, actually there's a lot of uh, uh, different fine points of what the Denali Fault System is really doing. But in summation, it probably could be three. One is what you've heard pretty much already is uh, primarily a right lateral strike slip with the uh, minor dip-slip components. Uh, there, another one might be primarily a dip-slip fault with lesser stripes of movement, which I'm not so sure there are many that would uh, adhere to that anymore. And then my, my story today, which is a, dominantly a thrust fault in the western half and a strike-slip fault in the eastern half of the state. Some of the best evidence, and you have already heard about this too today, uh, is uh, four offset is uh, the McGonagall and four Kerplutons. 
the uh, authors, Reed and Lamphere in 1974, proposed that, uh, that the fork or pluton actually at one time was joined with the uh, McGonagall pluton. They're both the same type of rock, uh, granodiorite essentially. They're both about the same age, about 38 million years old, and, uh, and sit with the uh, geometry that would suggest they were once joined and perhaps were once a, uh, uh, a one pluton deal crossing the fault. If we uh, move ahead to, uh, into uh, Gunsight Pass, where the, uh, some of the main uh, uh, bedrock visibility is for that particular uh, fault situation, we find that there's an intrusive contact on the McGonagall pluton, not a fault contact. And then indeed, the only fault we found in the uh, Gunsight area is one is a normal fault, a, a north side down, drop, drop down side. Uh, and uh, in looking at bedrock and along the entire uh, wall here, including a, a few kilometers to the south where it can be found. Uh, we can't find any major uh, um, shear zones or uh, uh, fault evidence for major movement at this point, which gives us a very difficult uh, uh, place on the Denali Fault to try and make it a, uh, a continuous strike sub feature. Uh, in the uh, interpretation of this now with the new faults, uh, we're uh, placing the Denali Fault in here in, in its usual location. The Gunsight Pass is about right there. Uh, the uh, McGonagall Pluton is outlined with some inferred boundaries here underneath ice, and otherwise the, uh, it dips out of sight under uh, ice right about there, and under alluvium on the other side, and ice both ways uh, on the other side as well. But it may be in, uh, a separate uh, Pluton that sits like that, separate from Foraker, although Foraker may have some uh, uh, fault contact as well on its uh, face there, as we can see in the map. Uh, in a quick uh, view of the geology of, uh, of the park area, the park's over in here, this is more of the, um, the Mount Hayes vicinity. Uh, it's, this is a typical situation where we see rock units that are different on each side of the fault, and, but don't seem to match up uh, in many places where we uh, try to match them up. If we package some of these rock units into terrains, uh, it makes it a little bit easier, but the terrain uh, uh, stratigraphy is often looser. It's not well controlled so that we can uh, really make the association of, uh, of offset. This has been some of the continuous problem of trying to determine what's really happened on, on the Nile Fault. And on the other hand, there are places where these groups of plutons with, of about the same age are on both sides of the fault and suggest not much a, a strike slip uh, movement uh, over the amount of time that, that they've been there, the 40 to 60 million years or so in that case. This is a little exercise we uh, went through. We uh, took uh, uh, Plafker, George Plafker's uh, stress vector analysis off of the uh, uh, one of the plates or maps in the uh, uh, decade of North American geology and uh, put a couple extra stress uh, uh, figures in there, interpolated them between the ones he had. And, uh, and then uh, where the uh, stress vectors reach the fault, actually split them into two components, one parallel to the stress direction and one perpendicular to the stress direction, to see if we could just see if it makes any sense in regards to what might be happening from Pacific Plate migration and uh, the likelihood of the types of movement on, on any faults within the uh, interior of Alaska. And uh, our results are sort of here where uh, uh, the red lines represent a, a a, uh, a more northerly or thrust effect, in, in, uh, the longer red lines, I guess I should say, and the, uh, the green ones, which are a fixed uh, uh, length of the triangular legs, represent the, uh, the uh, uh, perpendicular movement, or strike slip, if you want, on the Denali Fault. And of course, at about number five, four or five or so, thing, things start to get a bit bigger over here, which this would suggest is a many times greater chance of these stress directions creating a, uh, a thrust rather than a strike slip, whereas here they're either more equal or less chance. So we definitely have strike slip over here, whereas at about number five, which is here, I guess, things to the west of that start to become more, uh, more likely to be a thrust. And uh, it's fairly intuitive when you look at the uh, arcing fault like that uh, in, into the point where actually uh, without a, uh, some sort of a rotational uh, theory, uh, it'd be pretty hard to get the uh, the fault to come back on itself. 
Uh, you've seen these already too. The main, main story we're pointing out in this particular case is that the, uh, the main uh, event of the 2002 earthquake, the 7.9, was a, a thrust uh, feature and with a new, uh, uh, I guess this is Peter's fault, the Susitna fault uh, that was uh, mapped in the, uh, in the vicinity of that uh, epicenter. And this may be, as the red print says, indicative of a, uh, a westerly transition to strike slip. This is a, uh, a statewide, or not statewide, but uh, central Alaskan map with uh, three quads on it, McKinley Quad, the Hayes Quad, or maybe I'm out of place here, Healy Quad, then Hayes Quad. And uh, what we're doing is showing uh, uh, mostly thrust faults and a whole swarm of them in this section of, uh, of uh, both Cenozoic and uh, Cretaceous age. And a few uh, plutons that seem to be clustered in the area and not displaced much by any kind of stripe slip. Although in this particular map, they're all south of the main Denali Fault anyway, which I think is right about in there. Uh, in this other map, we're showing a, a, this area here blown up a little bit bigger, in which we are sh attempting to show that the Denali Fault is strictly a, uh, a strike-slip fault with very few, if not any, uh, uh, thrust faults nearby to the east of this area, roughly Paxson or the Richardson Highway. And then, but west of it becomes a, uh, it just brooms out into a, uh, a network of thrust faults that are all interconnected. The Denali Fault being just maybe just one of them in a sense right here, although the 2002 earthquake showed uh, strike slip movement. And this is a cross section of this area, 8A prime, showing the uh, uh, thrust wedge blocks as they potentially could be to, uh, to describe that type of a uh, surface effect. And a network of uh, plutons also here, which are uh, 100 million or old or so, which also have not been displaced, at least within their time of existence. And so the, uh, the main message here is that, uh, that there must be some mechanism to create a, uh, uh, a change in the uh, fault at that point. And uh, the possibility of, uh, of, uh, of this is, is something proposed by an Italian geologist, Mirarini, in 1948. It's kind of old stuff, but uh, where it uh, creates an inclined stress field as well as a horizontal stress field that's continuous from the normal tectonics because of a change in the, in the uh, subduction zone, uh, subduction plate uh, angle. As the plate rises, uh, it creates a pressure here creating a, a, a bunch of uh, um, uh, slip, uh, dip slip faults and, uh, and wedge blocks. The uh, surface features of this particular wedge block uh, can uh, look quite a bit like the last slide. This one over here is Migliorini's original or part of uh, some of his early work in the, in the uh, northern Italian Alps. So here's our, uh, our new view of the, uh, of the Denali Fault System where we have a, a traditional strike slip action going on here to about Paxson or Richardson Highway as I mentioned and then blossoms out into a series of, uh, of, uh, of uh, thrust faults and normal faults that, that take up the uh, the, uh, the overall uh, tectonic activity. It coincides well with a, uh, the uh, uh, Benioff zone uh, contour lines, which are shown here, are kind of weakly displayed. And uh, of course, within the last six million years or so, this is uh, what we think is might be part of the story. And uh, that's it.